a confluence of short, narrow thoroughfares, Sullivan, Empire, Flatbush, formed the boundary of the famous home of the Brooklyn Dodgers, Ebbets Field. The street trio came to a point at the main entrance, known in more glamorous days as the Rotunda. It was marble-floored and domed with blinking stars in a painted sky trimmed with small caged windows, the ticket booths. The almost square block in which Ebbets Field stood had at one time been nothing more than a huge hole, some thirty feet deep, sheltering squads of squatters who had existed there like ground moles for years. Eviction notices were served and the hole filled in, and I watched Ebbets Field as it was built, brick by brick. Ebbets was an edifice of charm to Brooklynites the day it opened, in 1913. I was only twelve years old at the time and had no idea of what was to come. Twenty-five years later, May 16, 1938 to be exact, the place where I pulled on my first big league uniform was also where my jersey and socks came off for the very last time. The dam broke, and my tears poured. I was engulfed by the terrible realization that it was all over. The life I had lived, loved, and believed would never end could not be revived. I just stared at Ebbets Field from outside its gates, thinking stupidly, Take me back. I'm not ready to quit. I want to go on. The saddest day for someone who has played professional baseball for 23 years has got to be the day he is dismissed forever, carrying inside him the gnawing, biting knowledge that it is over. Never again will he accept the challenge of the game or continue to perpetuate the dream he so fantastically pieced together as an impressionable youngster. For me, the saddest day had arrived. It was over. Worse than that, it ended in tomb-like silence, steeped in bitter humiliation. I had no quarrel with my release. I was thirty-eight years old. I had served my time. I expected the calamity. But when it came, it caught me unprepared. And to make a bad situation worse, none of the officials of the Brooklyn Club, nor its manager, was gracious enough to say goodbye or even offer an expression of good luck. Not even close. I arrived at Ebbets Field at about 12.30, and as I entered the clubhouse, I saw Heine Manouche and Roy Spencer standing by their lockers, still in their street clothes. I asked, what's with you guys, a day off or something? Manouche didn't crack a smile. You'll find out, he said, almost to himself. My locker was the last one at the end of a line. When I reached my chair, a Western Union telegram was laying on the seat with other mail. I sensed what was to come, and there it was. Burley asked me to advise you he is giving you unconditional release today. Stop. He will see you at Clubhouse, but we did not want you to read it in papers first and could not reach you on telephone. John MacDonald